Hey everybody, this is Al with El Rey Collection, and I'm here today to continue this top 10 series. Uh, the next decade is the 1900s, and uh, you'll see in this list that there's a, um, uh, a bunch, again, of uh, English players. These are basically the only cards that are produced, and boy do we have some of the nicest sets ever produced, along with... Uh, a few more players entering um, the mix, so to speak. So, um, you know, I, I in choosing this top 10, I also wanted to expand. I mean, I could have probably put this all together with just, you know, some tatties and some cadles and some some other of the epic issues um, from from the 1910s. I decided to to mix it up a little bit and talk about the ones that I thought were important. But, of course, you're going to see an overwhelming um, representation from certain sets because they're so amazing and scarce and beautiful. So, um, you know, I also wanted to make the point here that one of the reasons that I love um, early cards from the UK is that it's not just about the rookie card, uh, the first card. Yes, of course, those are important as they are throughout collecting, but there's really a premium that the UK collectors, and now I think even the American collectors, put on the beauty of the card and the scarcity of the issue. I think if there's any place where the beauty and scarcity really drive the markets, it's in the 1900s market where you won't see many um, rookie cards uh, in this top 10 list uh, just because you know these are from iconic issues that are very well recognized in the mar in the market as true rarities. Um, and, and with that you know comes a huge following. And in the case of the, the Taddies from 1907, uh, 1907, you know, they have, um, you know, a full website and, and, and following. This is one card set from, you know, 120, 115 years ago, whatever. Um, and, you know, it, it still has a huge following. And, and that's why you recently saw the Futera um, reissue some of some tatties of uh, more, you know, recent players, uh, post-war players in a set that kind of paid homage to this original set. I mean, it's really hard to, to it, it's to me, it's just one of the most epic sets. It's a 52 tops. It's a 48 leaf for those baseball collectors out there. It's just so iconic. So you're going to get a disproportionate number. Um, anyway, um, and I think, you know, hopefully I did a decent job, you know, counting, but actually um, I may have a card extra, um, actually now that I think about it, but we'll just go, we'll, we'll go with it. So, I think uh, top 10, or I'll sneak one in, uh, 11. So here we, uh, the, the 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 first one, or number 11, I guess, on the list of 10, uh, if that makes any sense, just trying to keep you all on your toes, is is the uh, Ernst Needham Cadles. Um, you know, first of all, the Cadles issue is, I think some people will describe this as their favorite issue from, from the 1900s, and it's going to be really hard to disagree with them. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful black border issue with stunning photography. Uh, this beautiful Cadles down here. And, you know, one of probably the most iconic early 1900 backs you've ever seen. Um, and Cadles high class. So high class cigarettes, early 1900s, amazing typeset, fantastic photographs, sca uh, uh, scarcity. Um, these are really tough cards to find just add up to an amazing uh, collectible. So, uh, and, and for those of you who don't know, Needham, <clears throat> he was a captain of the very uh, successful Sheffield team from the mid 1890s through the mid um, 1900s. Um, epic guy, check out his, his mustache. Clearly one of the best uh, players of, of the early part of the game. Um, another name that you may uh, have not heard of is the great defender Bob Crompton or Robert Crompton. Here he is in his Taddy um, card, which you know again. I mean, look look at that stash. I don't know if you can fully pick up this stash. 
He was uh, the very first player inducted in the English Hall of Fame. Um, he's a defender again, so he wasn't a glorious scorer. But look at that stash. He deserved to be in any Hall of Fame given that stash. But, uh, you know, first guy from the Blackburn Rovers to get into the Hall of Fame. He, um, epic, you know, defender. Great, great uh, cards. Yes, again, he has uh, an earlier 18 uh, 1906 Ogdens. But if you're going to push me to, to, to pick one Crompton card from the early um, from the early 1900s, it's going to be that. Um, this one, I just, I, I, I love this one. And I love this issue. Similar to Cadles, you'll see three nuns tobacco. And, and by the way, PSA, so, so SGC tends to put the names of the actual cigarettes um, as opposed to like PSA will put J and F Bell, who is the um, who is the issuer, and and then they may put three Bell cigarettes. Okay, so you've got three different ways you can look for these cars: J and F Bell Limited uh, from Glasgow, or three Bell cigarettes, or on the front it says three nuns tobacco. Um, so you can see this many different ways, and here's another issue. Of fatty folk, um, you know, I'd say picking up the um, the the nine slot right now. Uh, I I love this just because of the way he's positioned on the card. I love um, the three nuns tobacco issue. You know, again, it's not quite as elaborate as the Cadles, but it's a beautiful back, and I love you get the sense of what a presence fatty folk was here against this wall. And how b small the ball looks against this giant of a man. Um, so that's that's uh, that's really cool. That's number um, nine on the list. So number eight, lucky number eight is William Clark. You know he was the first uh, black player to score in the English Football League. Um, that's probably his biggest claim to uh, fame and importance in terms of. You know, being an important you know figure for the integration uh, of the league, he later would go on in World War One to be a war decorated war hero. Um, very collectible uh, player. He has a couple other you know issues as well. He actually starts playing in the late eighteen uh, hundreds. This is his his first card that I've been able to find, and of course, it's an epic tatty. So you know, you just gotta love those. Now remember. Uh, t uh, the, these tatties, the 1907, or I think some people have them categorized as 1908. I've other seen others in 1906, but they come with different backs. So this is the grapple mixture back, um, and then you know they have an, an imperial tobacco back. Um, if you ever see one that so tatties are interesting in a course of a whole other um, you know video. But let's just, uh, I'll, I'll take a brief aside here on the tatties as we appreciate this William Clark card. You know, the, um, so the tatties were, were, have these multiple backs. There's only two for the, for the first issue, which is the uh, Imperial Tobacco and Grapple Mixture. Um, and then in the reissue in 1913-14, they use London Mixture. And so while these cards look incredibly similar you know you, you can immediately just flip the back and you'll know which issue uh you have there are many uh players that have both backs and there are others that i think only have one i don't think that we fully understand and have cataloged although maybe the the tatty freaks um you know the guys who who really are in all these details have a have better knowledge of this than myself but you know, I don't think we have complete knowledge for sure. In fact, um, even the Billy Meredith 1913-14 card that um, was really not even known to exist until about 20 years ago, you know, we, we, we were still cataloging, especially the Manchester United uh, teams. So these tatties, classic, super sought after, and, you know, you're going to see some some disproportionate um representation as I continue to go on. Uh, the next card, which I guess I'm going to... I keep losing count. Um, I guess I'm going to say seven on my list is the incredibly rare John Sinclair uh, card. 
of uh, Lee Roos. And, and Lee Roos, after Fatty Folk, which is more, you know, lore, yes, he was a great player for, for Sheffield. I think most football soccer historians will say that, that Lee was without a doubt the best keeper of the of the first part of the um of the game and, and certainly in the 1900s so he is you know probably the best keeper um not not incredibly well known but i think for people who who've researched it you know they will come to come to that uh conclusion and you know what makes this card super special for me to include it is he's john sinclair which if you look at look at that back I mean, look at the type, the quality, the typesetting on this. This is just beautiful. So here, I'll put this down. So, so this is, you know, one of the rarest issues of the early 1900s. And, um, you know, Smoke Barney's Ideal Tobacco, Soul Manufacturer's John Sinclair. Oh, man, this is just, this is great stuff. And, and the actual card is similarly incredibly high quality. It's uh, photographic. You can't fully appreciate that uh on here on this camera but it's absolutely insane so this is uh number seven on my top list and you know if you th there are other you know players in this set um that they're all worth collecting so these john sinclair's these taddies the three nun tobaccos um um the cadles these are all just in my mind the elite sets of the early uh 1900s all amazingly beautiful traditional ta tobacco um, size. A set that is rarely seen but incredibly important is the uh, is this Packer set, Packer Colors, and you don't get the full extent here. I'll show you the back so we can focus on the front. Just has numbers. This one's particularly clean. But but take a look at this Vivian Woodward card. It's just gorgeous. I mean. It, it, it's so it's tiny it's fragile and it survived and for those of you don't, who don't know who Woodward was he was an amazing um, you know footballer he actually um, I think he captained the 1908 and 19 uh, 1908 and 1912 English team to the gold medal in the Olympics prolific scorer I think he had one of the highest strike rates per game like maybe one and a quarter or something um so he just epic player he also played cricket as a lot of these guys did they they, they double sported it up but this particular packers card not only as i think it's his, his first card along with um his taddy but um you know probably one of the more scarce issues that um that that, that i have in my collection so this is really kind of a marquee card um you know in my collection also you know following that and especially after netflix the netflix documentary or not documentary it's really a show uh there's some incorrect things in there about the english game really celebrated the the early days of the game some of the the challenges and and this particularly is the lord kennard uh card who who you know clearly uh you know is one of the main characters of that series and this is his his only card, but he he really beyond the series, you know, he was a really important pioneer of the structure of the game uh, and the professionalism of the game, um, and and really kind of driving the game and the FA Cup in particular. So you know he he's a, an important historical figure, um, and you know I think he definitely deserves a place in in you know one of the as one of the you know key early drivers of the game and this particular. Uh, grapple mixture taddy is is just fantastic so you know i think that um you know if you're a fan of the game if you're a fan of the the netflix show you know th this is a card to get i noticed a lot more interest in the last couple years in this particular um you know card because of its importance and the show but uh, you know clearly clearly if you're into history this is absolutely one um th this is absolutely one to pick up the Honorable Lord Kennard. Um, and then, you know, we're down to, you know, the last four. So that was, I, I named that one number five. And um, for number four, I, I got to pick uh, the Bloomer um, Taddy. Again, this over-representation of Taddy. In one way, I feel badly because, like, why so many from the same set? 
And the other, I mean, the checklist is amazing. You know, you've got Clark in there. You've got Kennard in there. You've got Woodward. You know, I, did, I had to make some choices, some tough, tough choices. But here I'm going to put the, the Bloomer Taddy. Um, and, you know, this, I, I wouldn't care if this was number one on people's list. The Cadles as well and the three nuns have him sitting down angry, looking at the camera. Also, just amazing choices. But I've really, really str strived to to top out the um, you know the number of cards from one player to three. So some really difficult um, you know decisions there because I, I I could have filled you know half of the top ten or more with uh, with bloomer cards and added you know a few more uh, Meredith cards and it would have been a bloomer Meredith um, you know video. But you know bloomer. Um, you know, they still, they still sing, um, uh, uh, Steve Bloomer's watching, you know, he, he is still, I think the, the second highest scorer in, um, uh, in, in top flight English, uh, professional football. He is, you know, just a legend. Um, you know, one of the, the original entrance into the, to hall of fame, more than a goal a game, uh, for country, I think more than 300, uh, goals for, um, you know his his team, so you know which is Derby County for most of it. And his in this um in this Taddy he's he's shown here playing for Middleborough, uh, which which is actually on the back end of his career. You know his rookie card, which is basically the nineteen hundred Ogden's. Um, you know really starts halfway through his career. A, a lot of people don't recognize that he actually starts playing in the in the eighteen nineties and 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 I think early eighteen eighteen nineties. So, but here here we have his Taddy. Epic card, epic cardboard. That's all I can say. So, um, and you know, in in an eighty four like this one is, which is a basically a, a seven, is insane. You know, if if I was being honest, I may put you know I'm I'm into my top three. I may put the Meredith one. You know, if 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 I was on a board, hey, pick the Bloomer seven versus a Meredith four. I'll probably pick the Bloomer seven, so I could easily switch these around. But, you know, I figured, you know, just for, for this sake, I'd talk about, you know, the, uh, you know, Meredith, who we talked a little bit about in the 1890s video. I'm sure we'll talk about him again in the in the 1910s and maybe even the 1920s because his career lasted 27 years. And uh, obviously an absolutely a pillar of the early game in terms of not only his longevity, but his uh, his play. Um, you know, he was, he played for, you know, United and City, which obviously, you know, may, it's easier to be famous there than some of the other clubs, but he, you know, he was, uh, he was a fantastic uh, player, an intense player and, um, and, you know, a very well-renowned uh, midfielder. And this is his taddy. This particular one um, is the, uh, gra is a grapple mixture as well. Um, some people ask me, which one seem more common to you? And I would say the grapple mixture seem more um, more common than you know imperial tobacco. Here I'll I'll show you. This is kind of so so that's number three. But here I just want to show you here. Here's a 1907, and this is a, a Vivian Woodward, and here's a grapple mixture, right? And then here is the 1907. And this is the Imperial Tobacco. So you can see the backs here, Grapple Mixture, Imperial Tobacco. Even the typesetting and ornateness is different. The Grapple Mixture, Imperial Tobacco. You can also see, you know, potential slight differences in how the fronts are perceived. Uh, some slight changes a little bit on the typesetting. But uh, these are, you know, most of the time you wouldn't be able to recognize it from the front. Again, just flip them over. So these are Vivian Woodward's. By the way, he's not number two on the list. That's just an example of the back. Same card with different backs. Um, so now I'm to the top two. And again, I can't, I can't uh, avoid this. Uh, my fixation on Bloomer as an epic, you know, um, player and really kind of the owner of most of the uh, uh, epic cardboard that that I have. Of the early 19 1900s because he is um you know just one of one of the you know true elites you know uh, of the game so you know his um his 
uh, Singleton Cole from 1905. It's just got just such an interesting image. And he's got his cap here um, from uh, England. And I, I don't know if it says 1902, but it's certainly an, an earlier depiction of him using the Singleton and Cole uh, card. These are photographic, but these are so tough. These Singleton and Coles are so tough. Super interesting back. This one, I'd say it has really good eye appeal, but there's obviously creases. It's a 1.5. Nick's all over the card. But still, every day of the week, I take this the, this card. If, if you ever see this card, just get it. Um, you will not re regret it no matter what shape it, it, it is in. Th these Singleton and Cole cards are just absolutely insane and the number one uh on my list and this is so 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 tough but this is the john sinclair who we had talked about when we talked about lee royce uh lee royce um this is the john sinclair bloomer you know he's all normally i prefer players in their kits like the singleton and cole but this particular issue again is just memorizing this john sinclair's Super, super hard to to find. Pretty much anybody you talk to that sees these cards just is all over them. Um, recently, a com well, I don't want to call a common, but Alf Common sold for like six hundred ungraded. Um, you know, it's it just a testament to how important these John Sinclair cards are. And this, the Bloomer, I'd say, gets the number one um, spot for me. Um, you know, this is 1906 when he starts playing for Middleborough after, you know, 15 years at Derby County. Um, you know, so he is, you know, certainly the Derby County leading uh, scorer. You know, he he definitely was, um, um, you know, an, an epic player. He's got a nice, you know, statue now. And he... Um, he, you know, basically Steve Bloomer's uh, watching is played at every Derby uh, home game to to this day. I understand, N never never been there, but um, certainly still their leading goal scorer and 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 the second leading goal scorer in um, in top flight English football. So you know, I think that uh, you know it's so hard. I you know these doing these top tens is just just really hard because. There's so many amazing choices, and uh, you know, I decided that you know maybe I fudge it a little and 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 maybe not do exactly what I do on a draft board, and to give you kind of a sense for some of the amazing sets out there, as well as a little bit of diversity of of, of players. Again, I, I likely on a on a true draft would have more uh, Merediths and Bloomers in here. Um, but you know, I think you 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 know, seeing players like William Clark, Crompton, Needham, Woodward, you know, um, Lee Roos, I, I, th I think is important for collectors, uh, especially when they're in these really really tough, um, you know, early UK issues. Uh, certainly, um, certainly, I've enjoyed collecting these over the years, and uh, hopefully, you guys will find some that, that you're interested in, and. Um, you know, with that, you know, I hope you enjoyed, you know, this video and, um, and I hope you enjoy all my, my epic cardboard here, uh, at the El Rey collection. And if you have, I certainly hope you have, you'll smash that like button, tell your friends, get, uh, get, please subscribe, you know, take some time to put this stuff together. So, you know, I really appreciate a like, uh, I really appreciate comments, things we can do better here. Um, and, uh, and really appreciate, you, you know, you taking time out of your day to listen and, uh, and see some of my collection. Hope you enjoy the top 10. Uh, thanks so much. See you next time.